existing property and make it accessible for fans who haven't watched or haven't read the books? About 11 months worth of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we. We can laugh now, um, but we did tell you know ourselves at the very beginning of the process that we were going to try to work all of the rules of the world build in the universe organically into the show, so that the audience could be challenged to you know ask and answer their own questions, to pick things up along the way. We said we will never be those happy sellouts who put a saga sell at the beginning explaining everything. We have a song. We do. We do. And it's like really helpful and it's, it's really great. good. Yeah, I mean like when I read the books, obviously I was deeply moved by the power of the friendship between Rose and Lissa. And I was deeply, deeply moved, <laughs> in other ways, by the power of the intense attraction and love story of Rose and Dimitri. So those, for me, were the two things that were most important to make sure we got right. If I felt like I fail Rose and Dimitri, if I personally fail Rose and Lissa, I should not have done this. I will, I will write a very deep apology letter to Rochelle. Um, the, the novelist because like I just wasn't gonna mess that up so I feel like I didn't Lisa but Christian you as well well Lisa and Christian too yeah. really because it's this, like, it's three love stories one is like the best friend story of women friendship young women finding their way in their life and these and they're so different and that's what makes it even more wonderful they're so challenged everything that happens but I also think yeah Christian and Lisa is such a such a different relationship I actually think that's one of the things that makes me love Dimitri and Rose so much too because we have such different yeah. love stories being told and we also have additional love stories in the series that were yes. not in the books yeah we love we loved creating new couplings that weren't in the books, you know? There was no queer representation in the books at all, so we definitely had a good time, you know, deciding who, which of our characters would be in that community and what their love stories would be, so there's a lot of fun there, too. Are you ready to take on another franchise with a lot of ships? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, yes, because... If we did our jobs right, that will be the outcome of this experience, and that means people love it. Yeah. And that makes me happy, you know? Um, and I'll just avoid the yelling at me, you know? I'll just keep <laughs> my comments off for a little while. I think we're gonna win a lot of people <laughs> over, too. I, I, I feel when I watch it, and I'm, I'm really drawn into all of these love stories so much. I, you, even if somebody doesn't love it, they're gonna be like, no, I get, I get it. They're gonna yeah. have to just be honest with themselves because it's really working. It works on that level that, um, that I always discovered well after the fact that Vampire Diaries and Originals worked, which that like uh, a woman would sit down, bring her boyfriend in or her husband, mm -hmm. or a, a daughter would bring her father or whatever, mm -hmm. and suddenly the men are so deeply invested in the show because it does give you, it, it gives you that strong emotional foundation of family and of you know and of connection, but also there's a lot of really cool mythology and a lot of great. Uh, vampire eye candy and great action sequences, so action this, tons yeah. of action. So it kind of does not, you know, it's not a recipe that we we're trying to fill by any means, but it really does tick a lot of boxes for a fully fleshed out audience. You changed the character uh, backstory for Sonia Clark. Was there a reason why and what we can kind of expect from her before going into the season for diehard fans who know kind of where she yeah, goes? Yeah, yeah. Um, all I can say on the matter, without being a little spoilery, is that um, when we went back and reread the first book, we realized that so much cool story had already happened. This Sonia's story had already been told. It was long gone and forgotten, right? Um, the story of Lissa's family, of Andre, her brother, had already been told. And we thought, well, that's uh, uh, for television, when you can see the pictures and not just read the words, mm -hmm. that's actually a wasted opportunity. So we did a lot of telling stories in a different order than you might think. Uh, so just because something seems like it's not being represented doesn't mean it's never going to be represented. It's working, though. Good. It's working. Good, good. <laughs> good, good. And there's little hints. There's little yeah. hints in there that tell you, like, maybe what we're doing with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Did you stick with just the first book for the first season, or you 
bringing in other parts. There are a lot of, well, you can talk well, about yeah, this. Yeah, there's elements from, from all, all of the books, actually. Yeah. Um, we, we pull some story way forward because one of the things we liked about telling the story now in the why now of it is it's about a society that's kind of coming apart, a class-based system that's not working, and it's challenging everyone, and so that's really resonant now. So the political stuff that's deeper in the series got pulled forward, but there's still all that other story to tell. So again, it's you'll see it all, it'll just be rearranged. Um, so yeah, so it's not it's not in the order of the books. But, yeah, uh, okay. but we do, we, we like to make the promise to fans that like if there's something that you've loved about the books, most likely in the in the run of this series, if we are allowed to tell the story as long as we want to, you will see it because we loved it too. Well, I mean, look, the, <laughs> without being spoilery about the books for those who haven't read it, but for those who have, I mean, book three tells a very, very, very good story, and you don't want the show to end at the end of book three, no. um, and you don't want book three to be season two necessarily either. So, so we're at least, you know, we're trying to follow that timeline a little bit. Um, again, I'm being coy just because. I don't want to ruin it for anybody else, but um, I think that I think that we could take it through three into four, and then there's depending on the world, mm -hmm. even beyond that. Yeah, there's a lot of story to tell. Yeah. So, I mean, let us not forget there is an entire spinoff series. I mean, <laughs> Rochelle Mead was very busy. Writer, mm -hmm. very, very busy, busy, very prolific. So, how do you find that balance of giving the fans what they want and also telling your own story? It's because we are fans of the material, so we're giving ourselves what we want. Um, we're making decisions for ourselves about what maybe doesn't feel right. I mean, little things like, in the books, Rose is not the age of consent, right? right? Um, so as hot and smoky and steamy as her little illicit affair with Dimitri was in 2007 or 8, it doesn't really feel like that anybody needs to see that. I mean, we've yes. seen we've seen that time and again in television. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really interesting to us to tell that story. So we made changes there. Um, there's a lot of sort of like episodic kind of gossip girl frolicking mm -hmm. and fun mm -hmm. that would like drive the plot of the first two books almost entirely. Mm -hmm. um, we reduce those down to scenes or moments, uh, parties, as opposed to driving the whole story of a season. Um, and then so as in doing that, we made up a lot of new story or pulled a lot of new story mm -hmm. forward. So we're following our own instinct as storytellers who have all these great story cards on the wall yeah. um, as though a writer's room sat and broke story for a year and a half. So yeah. we have an embarrassment of riches of good ideas and now it's just about the math of like, you know, the storytelling math of where they're all supposed to lay out. Can you talk about shooting the show in Spain and why Spain? <laughs> well, we... Well, when Julie, actually, she read the books before reading Vampire Diaries, and we were on vacation together back in the day during Kyla's life, and I ended up reading the books too. And when they, when Julie got them and wanted to do them, one of the things she had was um, a ton of locations that had been sent to her because she knew she wanted to do in Europe, and it was like, great, that's the perfect place. But then where? And out of these tons and tons of pictures that came, I was like, there's this, what, there's one town in Spain. What is it? And she was like, that's the one I like. And we both had the same idea about it. Yeah. The same vision. And as you would say, it's like a castle and next to it is a burger joint. Yeah. So you have, and we got lucky too when we went to Scotland. Got an actual burger joint, by the but, way. But, but, but a bar, a great yeah. dive bar with a really good a chicken sandwich. More than that. And, and yeah. some very nice fish as well. Um, and then when we were there, when we were scouting, when we were up on the turret of this castle, and we went, what? There's some vineyards. We were like, what's that building? And they were like, it's a monastery. It's empty. They're trying to sell it. And we were like, that's it's our boarding the school. school. Yeah. So everything was it was serendipity yeah. for all of that. So and wanting to expand the world, yeah. make it bigger. Uh, it was and really. Combine the world. Yeah. Too, is because when the books are Pennsylvania and Montana, they're mm -hmm. split from each other. And here we could like. The, pr the pressure could come way higher on that yeah. when you're living in It was really school. important just for story reasons, you know, yeah. that it wasn't just a school set at a boarding a show yeah. set at a boarding school because I just did that on Legacies. Mm -hmm. And I loved all the Bridgerton opportunities of the royal court, but in the books they only go to the royal court very periodically. Mm -hmm. And so first thing we did was like, let's put it all under one roof. Yeah. And that's why we went to Europe. Because once we decided that a boarding school and a castle and the entire royal court of this dominion needed to be all together, mm -hmm. we realized, well, we can't get finding that in Montana, you know? And um, so we, we went surfing. We went surfing in the UK, you know, Edinburgh, 
Um, we look at all the Harry Potter castles, and then uh, somebody from Shondaland, actually, who uh, is friendly with Emily Cummins, another producer in this project, said, have you guys ever thought about Spain? Because we shot Starcross there and had the time of our lives. And lo and behold, when we looked into Spain, this setting that now we shot the show in was the one of the first things our eyes yeah, it was drawn really to. Unique, it was really it didn't look like it didn't look like Harry before. Potter. Yeah, it didn't look like a world that you lived in before yes. at all. And that's why we loved it. It was important. That's so cool. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hit like, smash subscribe, and get notified for when our reviews, interviews, and news go live.